Um, yes, uh, Paola already said that um, I'm uh, working on open data. And um, that really means that I don't know a whole lot about data itself or about companies that use data. Because most of my work is in helping organizations use data as something that they share with others to enable different types of conversations and interactions. Um, so I'm glad today that I'm joined by three people whose companies do a lot with, with data, either uh, to provide a product or service or internally uh, to, to make decisions. Um, and I think together we can explore how data is changing the way that we work and how we have uh, uh, conversations and how we can actually use it to, to do something. Um, the central question for the panel is, is data really improving our business and by extension our lives? And we already sort of explored that during uh, lunch uh, and we hope to continue that conversation now. So let me introduce our panelists and also kick off by starting them a few uh, first questions. Um, our first panelist is Elena Rosa. Um, she has been recently appointed Chief Data Officer at the uh, Generali uh, Insurance Company. Uh, and uh, you've been in the insurance business for a long time, I understood. Um, I suspect that uh, Generali as an insurance company was mostly driven by statistics right from when they started. So uh, can you talk a little bit about your new role and, and what it actually means for Generali to become a data-driven company? Yes. Um, Generali has uh, based uh, their past uh, success on statistics, that's true, and we will keep doing it. Uh, we will just do it different way, a different way, because we realized at some point that the three major disruptors were really becoming real, big data, data analytics, and the digital revolution. So basically what we decided to do with this new appointment, which has just started, it's a brand new position um, from uh, June this year, uh, was to actually look at data in a different, in a completely different way. Uh, because we realize the customers are changing, they are connected to devices uh, more and more, they go to social and leave uh, comments and everything uh, more and more, and obviously we cannot avoid uh, having that kind of information into our data. So basically if we move from a traditional set of information, they will always be the basic foundation for the insurance company, but we will try to to enrich the customer uh, with the customer information with additional uh, things. So, for example, with information about the telematics, so the black boss installed in the car, for example, trying to understand the way he drives, uh, but also, you know, the, the full domotic stuff embedded in their houses and so on. So, basically, the new role is split into two. One is taking care of data, data governance, data privacy, data ownership, and the other part will be to actually analyze those data that comes up to make sure that we serve the customers better. Okay. Thank you. Um, we also have uh, Fabrizio Perino, um, who's with uh, Facility Life, um, a business-to-business -business oriented company in semantic search. Um, Earlier this morning, we heard Luca Di Biasa say that uh, there's a that we're shifting to what he called hyperhistory, where um, you know, uh, as we are now writing everything down, what is written is not by definition significant anymore. Um, so, are you the new hyperhistorian with Facility Life, making sense of what is still important in what all the stuff that we write down? Well, let me first just share a bit of facility yes. history because I think it's important we are not as well known as the other speaker on the panel. Um, facility Live is a, an Italian startup. Um, we are the most invested startup in Italy in 2014. Uh, we are the first non-UK company ever admitted to the lead program of the London Stock Exchange. Uh, at the moment we employ 60 people. Uh, the HQ is in Pavia, near Milan, but we have already office and operation in various countries, London, of course, Brussels, from where I come from, and uh, soon we will have new openings in, in Europe. Uh, our business is, uh, well, 
Semant we are a semantic search engine, basically. We have patents in 43 countries, and uh, our job is to help companies and people that have huge amount of data, um, organize them, and so that it could be, it will get easier to make sense out of them. Um, to go back to what Luca, I read the blog post, it's a great blog post. Um, I recommend that he writes an English version because it will be very useful for you as well. Um, that's perfectly in line with what we say and what we see and what's happening. Um, to give you an example, um, some observer, they say that we are moving into a new era is called, that is called digital humanism where um, the way we have conceived the interaction between human and machine is gonna change uh, to adapt um, to the man and to put man in control of machine. Um, I'm not saying that at the moment we are controlled by machine, but um, so far the technology that are available to us to manage information and to manage, um, well, history, which is a part of information, rely on technologies that have been conceived by men, but then have been conceived to be in a self, um, I would say, in self motion. So we have come to an end where um, algorithms are conceived by men, and in the end, they somehow provide information and instruction to men in some context. Um, we believe um, uh, we should change and you know replace um, this paradigm with um, a technology that puts men in control of algorithm and the way they interact with machine. And uh, we can do this um, by a technology that is being conceived by the two founders, Maria Cateroni and Gianpiero Lotito. Actually, I shall extend the greetings to all of you from Giampiero, who is following us from his bed. Unfortunately, he was constrained to stay at home. He couldn't come today. Uh, but I hope next year, maybe, or soon in the future, you will have uh, the chance to hear uh, from him uh, about facility life. Um, Mariuccio and Giampiero, they had a luck of working um, with publisher and uh, people that already at the time had huge amount of information because today we always pick about, oh, they are collecting data, there is a lot of information, but you know, human beings have been collecting information and data for so long since day one. And before um, the digital revolution, uh, the first digital one, uh, they already had to figure out some way to organize data. So Jean-Pierre and Mariuccia learn in the analogic era um, how um, to organize information, from people that were already doing it, and were able to translate this into a software, a technology, in patents that today, well, basically, we provide to um, large organization, corporates, and but we're also talking a lot with public institutions, for instance. We are very familiar with open data and government data. Um, I myself come from European institutions. And um, so uh, I think it's very important today uh, to, s to reconnect with the European culture, which is kind of different um, to uh, the one we have been exposed until now because of the success of technology that come from outside Europe. We should not be go against anybody that is non-European. We just have to be um, we well, acknowledge the fact that, as I was saying yesterday, um, solutions are local yeah. and uh, they come out from the way we interpret reality and people living in different contexts, they associate different um, yeah. solutions and see different way of seeing things. Okay. And maybe I'm speaking too much. And yeah, I, I, other people. I think we, we'll dive deeper into that, into the sense of control that goes uh, with those changes and how technology plays a role in that. But uh, we also have a third panelist uh, who has been um, silent in the, in the middle. So I'd like to introduce you to Angelo uh, Gigiliano, who is the uh, a country manager for eDreams here uh, in Italy, uh, Odigio. 
Um, and um, uh, if you've booked a plane ticket to get here to Milano, you might have used your platform in some way. Um, could you describe a little bit your company and your role? And you mentioned earlier that you've been with the company since 99. Could you also tell a little bit about what has changed? Because 99 till now is like an eternity in internet times. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a long journey since then. Uh, as you said, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I have been with the company since 99, since the company actually started up. Um, uh, the back of our business is essentially to sell flights, so we are an Alta, and in that sense, uh, what we do, we uh, take care of integrating uh, the flight content, uh, the all possible flight content that uh, exists uh, uh, in the world, uh, in the end, uh, and distribute uh, that content uh, through uh, several different uh, uh, interfaces, right? Uh, the source of, of the content, uh, which is uh, the airline uh, uh, fares uh, and uh, seats availability uh, it's essentially come, come essentially from uh, uh, the so-called uh, uh, GDSs, which is the global uh, uh, distribution systems. Uh, there are four uh, main global distribution systems uh, uh, in the world. And of course, by integrating uh, uh, consolidator of low-cost content uh, or integrating uh, low costs uh, directly. Uh, of course, in the past uh, 15 to 16 uh, years, uh, several things uh, uh, have changed and, and changed a lot. Uh, I, as an example, uh, you can consider that when we started uh, our activity, Google, in the end, uh, didn't exist. So the way we utilized to uh, publish uh, our content online were to uh, make uh, fix uh, uh, agreements with uh, big portals all uh, uh, over Europe, in Italy, in Spain, uh, in the UK, in France, uh, in Italy in particular with, uh, uh, without mentioning names, but uh, Virgil or Tim or Libero, the one that existed at, at that time. Then uh, Google appeared and, and literally has been uh, uh, a disruptive innovation in the sense from, that from one day uh, to the following one, there has been a, a, a new and very efficient way to um, push the product in front of the, uh, of the final customer, and of course being uh, much more efficient uh, in the way we, we could do uh, our job. Uh, I, I would mention uh, other, a couple of uh, uh, changes, then if you want we can dig uh, uh, some of them if you believe it's the case. Uh, the, the, the second big change, of course, has been the uh, low cost, because uh, uh, and, and particularly uh, the, the, the European low cost literally changed the market not only in terms of costs, because of course it introduced the, uh, the low fares, uh, very much lower than, than not the one of the legacy carrier, but also because they were uh, built around the concept of open information, meaning uh, while the legacy carriers uh, have the, the, the aim of distributing fares and seats essentially through offline agencies, uh, using the web as a consequence of the time, the change of the era that uh, uh, develop. On the contrary, low cost uh, has been, have been set up to distribute the, con the, the content uh, over internet. And of course that means having all the information public, having the possibility to integrate them, having the possibility to interact uh, in a, in a, in a uh, truly different way. Uh, that, that has been the, the, the first big change. The second big change has been the possibility really to gather uh, a massive number of information, not only from airline, but also uh, from our customer uh, and from Google. Uh, and what we have been doing uh, over the past, uh, especially the past uh, five to six years, uh, is to uh, analyze those information. We grab information again from airline, from the customer, from Google, uh, and uh, try to build uh, as much as we can an interface, either a website or an application, or uh, through uh, a web optimizer uh, in mobility, uh, in the way that the customer uh, potentially will always have uh, uh, the best uh, possible content, not only prior to actually 
uh, end up with uh, buying a uh, flight, but also after that, during, uh, during the stay at destination. Um, if, if I look sort of superficially to the three companies that you represent, um, I get a sense that the, you know, Generali has been around since before big data, before the three disruptors that you just mentioned. You two companies actually started on the wave of that type of data uh, becoming available. Could, could we say that the companies that you two represent are sort of commercializing a specific algorithm or a set of algorithms, whereas Generali is now sort of exploring what type of algorithms actually should be part of their internal operations? Can you um, have you any sort of thoughts uh, around that? I, uh, speaking for Facility Light, I'd say, well, we are a platform for the future, and which is based on um, on a set of methods and uh, to empower corporates and public administration, but we hope also in the future uh, individuals to have a better experience interacting with uh, the way we deal with knowledge today, which is today via search engine. That, and um, we tend also to say that, well, today um, there are two different layers of technology. Um, there is one layer, this is underneath, uh, that empowers other platform like e-commerce or apps, um, and we consider ourselves on the underlying layer, and together with many non-European platforms, and um, we believe that um, we are contributing, and we hope many in the future. Um, to build um, a new layer, I mean, uh, in the same layer, to be a new European technologies, and I'm saying this not because we're against uh, non-European technology, it's because technology is something kind of comes from the culture, um, and we, I mean, on the, in line with digital humanism, which is what we believe, we think that we need a new wave of platform and technologies that empower individuals um, to have a way of interacting with data and knowledge that reflects the logic of the person that is interacting with the machine, um, rather than um, uh, some see a solution um, moving toward a society that is governed by um, algorithms that in the end decide on the basis of statistic analysis um, what you should be seeing or you should be doing. Yeah, I think that that's also of interest for 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 when when I look for flights so or when it's about insurance. Is what what role do I, as the person seeking information or the person uh, maybe providing information? You tr talked about having kits in cars and maybe track. What role do I, as an individual, either interacting with the data or, or creating data for you, have in, in in the way that that you look at uh, at your company? and the way that you deal with data. Because you know, if I search for, uh, for a flight, for instance, uh, my profile probably determines in some way what you present me. H how does that work? Can you explore that a little bit? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, we do uh, pre build, uh, present, uh, and elaborate uh, uh, solutions based uh, on, uh, on your profile. Uh, first of all, the profile that, uh, as you said, uh, uh, comes from, derived from uh, uh, the, the information that you provide with, uh, uh, to us, but also with the historical data, so our specific knowledge about uh, uh, a person like you over time uh, making the same type of search in the same moment of the day or day of the week or week of the month, etc. So. Uh, Essentially, what we have been doing is uh, uh, try to understand exactly uh, what you are looking for before you even start looking at it and try to uh, 
make a projection and try to uh, understand exactly what you would like to buy. Uh, consider that uh, our world uh, is very tough. In the end, uh, uh, suppliers like airlines are also our competitors. Google, which is one of our suppliers, is also one of our competitors. There are several distribution forms like uh, Meta, et cetera, et cetera. So the only possibility we have to be successful is to understand the customer and provide the best customer service. And the best customer service actually starts uh, from predicting what the customer would like from, uh, from us. And, and how, how's that in, for generality? Because insurance companies probably have always been about profiling, but maybe not as a, at a very granular data level. Yes, for sure, the insurance company tends to have less information, and uh, especially we can use information only if the customer allowed us to have that information. However, having a huge amount of past data, what we try to do is to analyze his propensities towards different uh, things. For example, we know what kind of propensity to buy a health product someone of that profile uh, um, will do. And we tend to train our uh, networks, uh, selling networks, to say for that type of profile, you could test, test if he wants to buy health insurance. So basically, well, our level of sophistication right now allows us to, to understand and to calculate the probability for each and every type of profile to buy one specific product or to requ um, require a specific service or, you know, we even know what if is probable to leave the company and go with another company, for example. And obviously, we try to use all this information to assure that the customer gets what he needs to have, uh, in trying to, to keep that specific customer happy. So, you know, we, we do use pretty much the same approach. Now, the real difference is that we tend to do it batch rather than online. So our approach is more based on past figures and statistics and algorithms and so on. Sometimes they are easy algorithms used since a long time, but sometimes we even look at uh, the most sophisticated algorithms existing in the market. Uh, but we tend to do it a little bit more batch rather than online. Uh, General is investing a lot in getting this type of experience. So we look at the other industries to make sure that we incorporate the new methodologies, the new techniques, and so on into our uh, algorithm way of producing results. That, that's what we're really doing at the moment. And in, in that sort of taking into account the profile of the client in, in the type of information or the type of offers, that you provide uh, clients with. Um, do you ha make any attempts in, in uh, making that a little bit more transparent to those clients? Uh, because m by now, I think more of us have become aware that algorithms play a role in how things are presented to us. Uh, when I look at my Facebook timeline, I get more and more, let's say, suspicious about the type of decisions that factored into w the information that I'm presented with. and have a, as an individual, an uneasy feeling of how that works and not quite sure. Um, as you are sort of intimately working together with clients to give them the best result, is there a role for transparency in how you get to that result for them and sort of as an assurance? Um. I think, I mean, for the insurance market, um, the algorithm behind are quite uh, transparent, um, especially the profitability part. Everyone knows what we use and how we use it. Uh, we tend to be a little bit more, let, let's say, a little bit darker when it comes to understand, uh, you know, how do we uh, calculate the propensity to buy, well, which, which is statistics in the end. But for example, how we uh, calculate the, the propensity or how many euro the customer will leave the company if we increase the price or not increase. And we try to make sure that each and every customer gets the right price according to 
his profitability level and his propensity, or we call it elasticity of demand, basically. But if you look at the uh, methodology that we use, is is it's absolutely transparent, and you know the pricing that we have to apply is regulated, it's highly regulated, so there's nothing untransparent around that. What it comes a little bit un unclear is how much discounts do we apply to one customer or another one. But it's still based on methodologies and algorithms which are absolutely transparent to the technical world, if you want. So maybe not to the final customer, but uh, in the insurance market, everyone knows how we calculate the propensity to buy, the propensity to leave the company, the elasticity of demand and how then the, the discount is adapted according to the trade-off profitability and uh, elasticity of demand. And how's that for you? Does, does being transparent about how you service the customer play a role in, 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 in the service that you're providing? It plays a role more and more, I have to say, because uh, Again, the, the level of competition uh, nowadays is, is, is really, uh, uh, I, I would say, furious. And uh, in that sense, uh, our experience uh, uh, says that uh, a customer before actually end up buying with us uh, uh, make uh, at least uh, five to seven searches on our competitors. So, uh, and, and that means that for sure the customer will know before choosing us uh, what alternatives there are in the market. So for us, the best is to provide the customer with uh, a tool that he can personalize. Uh, so give to the customer the power once uh, he has made a, a search, a selection, to modify it, so to slightly or fully change the result without leaving the page. Because even a customer that left the search result page and go to a competitor, means uh, uh, potentially having lost a booking. So that's something we don't want. Well, I think the best way for me to give a, uh, an example uh, well, is to quote uh, Eric Schmidt. Uh, a year ago in Berlin, um, he made a speech and he said, you know what, if you try and Google, uh, I want uh, a flight to a warm location where you can snorkel uh, in winter. I don't remember the exact wording. Um, well, he basically acknowledged that today um, traditional um, methods of researching information on the web are somehow unable to deal with this sort of natural language and complex query. Um, so this is true. and. On the one hand, we have accustomed ourselves to uh, interact with, um, with the machine uh, in a, a natural way. So you have an idea in your brain, and you have to translate this idea into keywords. And then you know it will take some keywords to get what, where you want to go. Facility life is a bit different. What we try to do and what we do is um, learn um, your n pattern, the way you construct your, your thoughts. And on the basis of that, and this is for the future, um, for what we're going to be B2C one day, is to provide you with the search of these auto profiles on the way you interact. And this inevitably will increase the transparency and the, the, the experience of the users. Because today, um, for instance, two days ago, the European Parliament released a study on big data. And uh, I used to work in the FinTech of the European Parliament, so I'm promoting the institution. It's very good. Um, but the biggest concern, uh, if you read the study, is about spurious correlation. So when you have some data, uh, of people, and um, they are processed in an automated way, and then you get some correlation that may not reflect what you have in mind and the way you interpret reality and the way uh, I mean you want the information you want. Um, 
And then the other problem is, and this is emerging also from the speaker I heard uh, yet last night and over dinner and during the day, is the fact that um, algorithms are conceived by man, um, but then they have some, they are some, they have they're a life on their own, and so sometimes you end up with you you don't know what are this. I wouldn't call them side effects, but other effects or uh, that may come out of an algorithm, and. Uh, and then some other people say, well, okay, you provide me the information coming from an algorithm that is processing data I have produced, but I don't know how, how that came about. you do that. And, um, well, depending also on how you are as a person, if you're a positivist or a pessimist, you know, technology-wise, I mean, that has a huge impact on society and on people, but also on business. Does that mean that you see the algorithms that you use actively evolving, let's say? And how do I experience that as a client? Because getting back to, to you know, booking flights online, if I look at my experience doing that, I'm not sure whether I've seen lots of change in the way I do that online over the years. Uh, but are the underlying algorithms actively evolving based on what you see people do with it and, and how I formulate my questions, for instance, as a, as a client? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll, I'll, the, despite the fact that, uh, in, the, in that sense, I, I'm sorry for your poor experience. <laughs> well, it's not, not, maybe not a poor experience, <laughs> but, but there's stuff lacking. You know? I'm joking, I'm joking. No, no, uh, it, 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 it might seem that the search itself uh, over, over, uh, over the web didn't change, but in fact, uh, uh, behind the scene, uh, changed a lot. We have been working, uh, as I said, uh, uh, every day, uh, trying to make uh, the customer experience uh, uh, more and more, uh, say, easy. But not only that, uh, trying to understand exactly what uh, the single customer does while browsing online, either through a PC or through a mobile uh, device or through uh, our application. Um, I believe that uh, uh, if, if you uh, if you notice, uh, well, uh, I have clear our pages. Uh, if you notice our pages, uh, uh, I mean there are uh, much more possibility uh, to filter, to adapt. Uh, but not only that, uh, I mean the content that we display to our customer is now much better than it were only uh, three years ago in terms of. Uh, uh, just for instance, uh, payment method in terms of uh, uh, the type of combination uh, uh, we take uh, into consideration uh, when we build uh, the, the trip, when we build the journey, when we build uh, the fly itself, the way we combine different flights. Also, we do offer uh, to the customer uh, what we call, uh, um, let's say, post buying uh, possibilities which is the possibility to enrich the, the flying experience with other elements before and after having closed uh, the booking. This is overall, again, linked to, the, to, to, to our plan, which is uh, to follow the customer uh, with every uh, device uh, it actually uses, and not only during the time uh, he spends uh, actually with us uh, through our application and through our web, but, but also after that during the, the trip itself. Um, may, maybe as, a, as a, a final question and looking forward to, to, to the future, you just mentioned earlier that um, some of your suppliers in terms of data are also your competitors. So, so Google, for instance, is Google Flights is a competing element, whereas you also actively work with them. Um, so basically you're going up against and also if you look at competition between insurers uh, against the algorithms of others uh, other companies but also possibly other individuals like if i look for a rental uh, using vpn from four or five different geolocations to f see if there's a difference in a deal do you see sort of a, a, a for the future sort of an arms race of of al algorithms where I try to bring into the field my own algorithm to beat yours uh, or to get a better deal? I, be, I believe that uh, there, there's already a, a, a fight somehow, no? 
And, and yes, you, you are perfectly right. I believe that there will be not only a, a fight uh, within algorithms, say, uh, of course, you have to have categorization, meaning fly searches instead of, uh, I don't know, AdWords or so by categories. But there will be also a, a, a fight between algorithms and human being in the sense that uh, when an algorithm is really able to beat the human being capacity and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, somehow affinity uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the process. And, and again, uh, the, the, the algorithm is, is what make, or, or algorithms in general, is what make uh, the difference between us and our competitors in the end. And uh, it, the, 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 the world we will see in, a, in 10 years' time will be a fight of the best algorithm overall, able to uh, understand the customer's need and anticipate that. In that sense, uh, yeah, it's a full fight. Well, um, I think um, this is, we have been saying it for a while now. Um, we always talk about consumer and customers. I rather speak about citizen. So um, if um, I have a way of providing information that is really able to understand what I mean, I think that I would be better uh, placed to assess the value of a proposition that leads then to economic transaction. Today, the, the reason why people, well, the VPN, they search different browser is because they have a mistrust yes. for the machine. Yeah. Because they really... And they're, they're maybe suspicious of companies in general. Yeah, they think, you know, um, this is a, a machine, try to screw me, if you allow me the, the word. And um, so I have to mistrust and check, do a lot of checkings. Whereas if I know that the information I'm getting is, is produced, of course, by a machine, but that, that the machine function with the same line of thought I have, and then provide me with the, the user experience I'm looking for, I think, um, well, the value and, and the price itself uh, will be still important, but, uh, I mean, would be not as important as it is today. Um, well, it is true that in economics, unfortunately, uh, well, the only so far, the only way we have to assess the value of something is pricing. And uh, but as Vittorio, for instance, was saying today, um, well, now somehow uh, we are figuring out that we are not all homo economicus. It's not the maximization of profit that counts. Uh, and I think that this will come back also in technology, where the same rule of the world apply. And um, well, if we can mix in quality and price, I know it's difficult. Uh, but that reflects really my taste. Uh, I think we will be talking about uh, e-commerce and uh, online buying in a different way and uh, with less mistrust. But that's also not just a matter of quality and pricing, but also about trust and, and sort of the sense of control that you mentioned earlier. Uh, are these sort of, uh, let's say, ethical constraints that, that figure into the discussions that you're having about using data, either at Generali or uh, uh, the other companies? Yeah. Um. Since, since I started this journey to, mm -hmm. a few months ago, um, I have been really surprised by how many algorithms and information I can find on the open source, mm -hmm. which makes, by definition, the, the potential for the analysis completely transparent and available to everybody, right? And, and this is really important, so the real key uh, key for me is to be able to understand what the business needs are uh, even before the business needs um, emerge and to try and test these open source methodologies to see which one creates value for the customers. 
And if you create value for the customer, the customer is happy. In the end, the trust will be built. This is what I have noticed uh, this, you know, this past two months, three months that I've been working uh, in, this, uh, in this sector. So I think it's all about uh, making sure that people understand that you are creating a value for them with the products, with services, with everything they need, uh, even before they know it, because they belong to profiles groups. Um, and in that case, you know, the let's call it ethical or moral uh, won't be an issue. Okay. On that notion, I think we're running out of time. Uh, thank right. you very much for having this conversation this afternoon. And I'll, thank you, Ton. Uh, thank to you Tom all Camino. for the inspiring connections. <laughs>